Hello all you multi, mighty, morph, morphin, malt monsters and thank you to Emmanuel Brower for that malt mention. This is the Bothy, I'm Ralphie, you're welcome. Pull up a seat, make yourself comfortable and pour yourself a dram. It doesn't have to be Scotch whiskey, it could be bourbon, rum, rye, cognac, whatever you want or perhaps even a little cup of coffee. It doesn't particularly matter, so long as you're comfortable and uh, ready for a malt moment. And the malt moment today for Ralphie Review 916 is Glenmorangie 13 year old cognac cask finish single malt bottled at 46% and non-chill filtered, it says on the label. Right, looks promising. A little bit in the expensive side in the UK, I paid about £75 for this bottle, but um, as I reviewed not that long ago another Glenmorangie called Malaga Cask and I really enjoyed it, I thought I would go for another bottle. It's what we do. If we enjoy one version of a whisky, we big it up in our mind that um, it's going to be enjoyable next time round if it happens to be another version, another permutation of a single malt. But as I'm sitting here today to tell you, it's not necessarily the case. Um, where will I start with this? Well, we'll start with the fact that over the years in my channel, I have in fact reviewed eight Glenmorangies including the standard 10 year old which I still recommend and it's widely available and at the moment I'm engaged in a series of single malt reviews which are focusing on official bottlings rather than me buying what I want to buy which tends to the way things are going more and more obscure stuff because it's coming from independent bottlers and particularly it's coming from smaller independent bottlers who know how to look after casks. That, that's what I would buy because I'm spending the money that I'm getting from the channel to buy what I review rather than accepting any gifts. But to help you get your bearings and to navigate the whiskey world, I'm, I'm dedicating about eight to nine reviews. So over a space of almost three months, I'm dedicating reviews to single malt whiskies, which are official bottlings. And I can tell you right now, standards do vary considerably in terms of quality of smell and taste. How about this one? See, the thing about in, um, official bottlings, there's generally more of them and they're more widely available internationally. So if you're looking for a particular single malt whiskey, the chances are that the one you'll find first is the official bottlings. Um, and it's a good place to start. Although many of these official brands versions, um, they tend to be kind of geared towards the mass consumer market who is led by brand reputation, and rather than their own educated palates. Anyway, more about this whiskey. Yeah, you're getting a reasonably barley sugared Glenmorangie you note, know, about the 12 year old bourbon cask matured version on the nose. And you're getting something slightly harsh on the nose as well and it comes across it comes across as woodiness it's not unpleasant because when you're nosing at the syrupiness the natural sweetness of this single malt which is produced in the tallest stills pot stills in Scotland and therefore there's a lot of reflux goes on so it's a, a, quite a, a refined single malt signature. Very accessible, but not today. It's an interesting nose. Uh, before I add any water, I'm gonna have my first taste. Here goes, wish me luck. 
I have been tasting this whiskey, not a lot of it, but I have been tasting it now for about three weeks, on and off. Initially a little bit of barley sugar, soft cinnamon ginger, and then a blast of dry, astringent, bitter, sour wood. Let's examine it again. What they're saying here is it's a cognac cask finish. What I'm tasting certainly tastes like European oak, but it tastes like, such is the harshness of the impact on the first taste, that I'm honestly wondering, although it was constructed as a cognac cask, has it ever even matured any cognac? Or is it still a European virgin oak cask, which was originally made for the cognac industry and then redirected to Glenmorangie? Because the astringency of the wood is frankly harsh. There's no other word for it. Now, if you like some really woody single malts, you're going to love this, if this is your taste. It's not mine, because even in the first taste there, the woodiness absolutely overwhelms a pretty decent bourbon, fresh cask bourbon matured um, background of credible, quality, consistent Glenmorangie. But at the moment, the cognac casks are really not helping. Let's try again. You get the arrival and then the sudden, it's like a, a grenade going off, boom, of acetic, raw, green, flavoursome wood, but not flavoursome in a particularly nice way. Let's add her some water. That should help. The thing about Glenmorangie, it's a subtle single malt, so I can't add too much. I don't want to drown it. I'm adding half a teaspoonful, three millilitres. Gentle, gentle as we go. Right, let's have another shot at this. I am of course giving it 13 minutes in the glass because it's been 13 years in the cask, so a minute in the cask. A minute in the glass for each year in the cask is certainly going to help me just slow things down. But what I'm finding is that it doesn't matter how long you leave this whiskey in the glass. The Glenmorangie doesn't start to reassert itself much over the wood influence. The wood influence dominates and continues to dominate aggressively no matter how long you leave it. And frankly, I'm not particularly enjoying that. So far, at almost £75 a bottle, I feel genuinely, seriously, that I've wasted my money. You won't hear this in many other channels. But I'm just telling you as it is. This remains an opinion and a perspective. They've not been banned yet. Not yet. The nose improves. There's more of a sort of dry, slightly gummy Glenmorangie in the, on the nose. So adding a bit of water will improve the smell of this whisky. It tends to kind of restore the Glenmorangie single malt aspect of it, which again is quite competent in the background. There's nothing wrong with that. It's all down to these cognac casks. It's exclusively down to these cognac casks and the way they have directed this whisky away from the Glenmorangie balanced, complex style into something much, much more dramatic taste. From start to finish, Acetic, green, harsh, 
resinous, bitter, sour, angry, aggressive, hostile, nasty, wood. From start to finish, so much so that the Glenmorangie single malt is practically invisible behind it. Now, I just want to say for the record, buckle up malt mates. This, in my opinion, is the worst Glenmorangie I have tasted in 20 years. I am very surprised, knowing Glenmorangie's reputation, that they have allowed this to be bottled. Very surprised. Next time, I'll just buy another bottle of the 10 year old, but that won't be for about a year now. See, the thing is, when I have a bad experience with a single malt, and this is a bad experience for me, I'm just, I'm just telling you the way it is. Um, it puts me off the brand. It only, only takes one bad bottle. And it puts me off. And fortunately, I've got the Malaga cask version. I've got other Glenmorangies. So what I'll do is I'll tip some of them into this to undo the harsh woodiness, to kind of restore it a little bit. So it's not as if I'm going to, as if I'm going to throw this out. In fact, I should probably keep this now as a five-star example of, of a specimen, really. The rest of this bottle as a specimen of how bad a whisky can get when the wood utterly, completely and totally dominates in all the wrong ways. What mark will I give this? Here we go. Seventy-seven out of a hundred and that's a malt mark. I commend them for not chill filtering it, however, there's a growing conversation out there, malt mates. When something says it's unchill filtered and yet where's the scotch mist? Doesn't seem to appear. And other times there's no information on a non-chill filtering statement anywhere about the brand and yet when you pour a glass you get a little bit of scotch mist appear. I'll cover that topic in a few weeks' time. People are becoming more aware of it because with the price of whisky and with people's growing palates and awareness of what is good and what is not, and for value for money, people need to know more about this. It's, it's more complex than it first appears. I'm Ralph, I hope you've enjoyed this review, but before you go, before you go, I think one thing that you'll take from this review is that before you spend your money, you really want to get as much reliable information as you possibly can from the internet to help yourself avoid mistakes. And there's a new platform, a new website just been launched specifically for whiskey and it's called dramface.com. So I'm going to put a link down below to dramface.com. And um, it's a group of whiskey enthusiasts who are launching a comprehensive um, information source whiskey channel from scratch. Got big ambitions for it. And my co host of the Online Scotch Whiskey Awards, the Oswiz, Roy um, Duff, is one of the organisers and contributors. So I really wish the channel all the best and I'm happy uh, to direct and recommend it to you mock mates just to, as, as, as it's beginning to find its feet and um, generate more and more content. So there you have it, I'm done and dusted if you want to pop back again shortly. Um, for extras, 916 extras, I shall be giving a personal opinion and overview and it is, just for the record, for the record, a personal opinion and perspective of the Macaloni versus Scotch Whiskey Association case. I'll see you then, Mott Mates. Bye bye.